Hello and welcome to Once More With Feelings, The Forest Seasons, newest album from Winter Sun. And it isn't time to. Yep, no time to here. What time to ever happen? Nobody knows. It'll be with us when it is. In the year 2099. It'll just come out on every time three instead. <laughs> um, but anyway, none the more for our ranting about the fact that no time to yet. Um, so this album, uh, it's a concept album of sorts. I couldn't really pick up on the concepts, although the singing is clean enough to do so. It's more of the case if he wanted to write some songs about the seasons, so he did. Yeah. Um, if you don't know who Winter Sun are, it started out as just, um, I can't remember his name. Sorry. Uh, Jari of... Enciferum. Enciferum. Um, or Enciferum. It's another one of those. How the fuck do you pronounce it? It means a metal figure. <laughs> huh? It just says it's like metal. Mm. But anyway, it started out as just him, and then as the project progressed, he brought various other members in, and it's kind of... All the members are from different bands, aren't they? I believe so, yes. Uh, um... I'm just going to quickly check. Um, you've got Kai Hato, who was a member of grindcore band Rotten Sound. Um, he's, he also is currently working with Nightwish on their upcoming album. Okay. Um, because their usual drummer is having a break due to insomnia. Can't sleep. Too many drums. <laughs> Drawing noise inside my head, louder and louder. Uh, you've got Temu Mantiri, Mantisari, who um guitarist for Imperanon. I don't know them. I don't know either. Uh, and you've got Juka Koskinen, who's the bassist for Kane's Offering. Don't know them. Um, oh, also worked with Norther and okay. uh, and Amberian Dawn. Don't know them, but anyway. Uh, yeah. So it's kind because of, it's not really a super group or anything like that. It's just uh, he's borrowed people from other bands. Yeah. Well, it, a side project. With, it's kind of in the same vein as I'd say probably a perfect circle. Mm. Uh, it's not technically a super group, but all of them are established acts and. It's sort of side project for all of them. But anyway, um, weird thing is, Time 2 has had... He did start work on Time 2, so I don't know what's going on there. I think there's some issues with the labels. Sort of one. Uh, I think something went wrong with the labels and it got in the way of him starting it up and he's kind of just gone off the rails. So, mm. so he's going to go, okay, it'll be done when it's done. I'm going to work on something else. Yeah. I mean, the way it's set up, uh, back when it was just him, he was literally doing almost everything except... Yeah, he was doing everything except drums at the start. Yeah, I believe he's actually had like some surgery or something recently, because he can't actually do that anymore. Mm -hmm. he's, really, he's just played too much metal. Ah, uh, um, it would make sense considering you look at what he's listed as doing, and um, the cutoff for guitars is this year, so... Mm. Um, yeah, it's sort of like guitars, vocals... Uh, keyboards. The only thing that he's still doing at the moment are vocals and keyboards. Um, it, yeah, I I honestly wouldn't be able to, because I only found out about Winter Sun during uni, so I don't know. Did they release any? Did he release anything before Time uh, One? There's a self-titled album came out in I think Time Say 2008. Mm. His first release, so that would have been around when I started uni. So. Yeah. Um, I think it's just later. Anyway, um, we didn't do that. And Time One came out way later than that, so. Well, Time One came out in 2012. 11, wasn't it? Just 12, okay. I slightly off. Okay, the first album was 2004. Okay, well, that's way over. The only reason I know Time One was 2012 is because it was when I was living in above Belgarum. Uh -huh. Yeah, 2001. Uh, 2004 here. Okay, first time. It's actually, it explains why people were waiting so long. Time literally like eight years to make. Mm. Honestly, I think time one, it didn't live up to expectations for me, personally. Mm. Probably because it took so long 
the people were expecting it to be something amazing it just didn't quite work yeah it's one of those an album can take ages and one of two things will happen or well, one of three things either it will be amazing like with faith no more it will be um it won't live up to expectations like time one although for me i didn't have expectations so it it didn't really affect me that way or it'll, it'll end up like something like uh, chinese democracy oh did you huh we didn't mention that then you realize we're going to have to cover the next guns and roses album because of us constantly referencing that is it ever gonna happen i don't know i think they are recording stuff i mean I think Slash is back with them, so go figure. <laughs> but anyway, on to this album. So the basic concept behind this album was using um, the title and the structure of it, really, are inspired by Vivaldi's The Four Seasons, hence The Forest Seasons. <clears throat> Although there's no mistaking the two. Yeah. Unless you have a stroke, then you might confuse the two. But structurally, it is very much based in sort of classical music because it's told in movements and parts and all that sort of thing. I mean, Awaken from the Dark Slumber is in two parts and Eternal Darkness is in four parts. Um, and all four tracks are... It's just 12 minutes, yeah. Most of them are 14. Yeah. The first track is almost 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, they are very long to say the least. Hmm. But it's one of those cases of, for the most part, they don't feel long. No, they don't. Because of the structure, they do actually feel like multiple songs. I say for the most part, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, a common aspect that runs through the album is you've got this very strange sort of ethereal sound. Um, I think it's... It's probably part of the theme, you know, passing of seasons and all that. Mm. I think the one that stood out to me most, actually, was the fact that some parts of the first song, that being Awakening from Dark Samba, mm. made me think of Dimmu Borgia. I can hear that. It's like, I did not expect you know, that kind of sound to be here. Mm. And there's one point I was thinking, where's into the right album here? <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, Dimmu Borgia is one of the black metal bands that I find it easier to listen to. Partly because they're a lot more melodic. Well, there's a lot of kind of symphonic stuff going on there as well. Mm. And also, I mean, it's weird for me to say this because I do like a lot of death metal, but I prefer black metal that has clearer vocals. And whilst the vocals on this are harsh, they are clearer. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that this is anything to do with black metal as an album, though. Mm. Do we more go question the warning comes to black metal listening to the latest stuff? It's more kind of black and death. I haven't listened to Dimmu Borgir in, like, five years. Neither have I. Too far. So I listened to one of their albums the other day, but it's an album from, like, five years ago. <laughs> um, because there's only four songs on the album, we might as well go through them track by track. Mm. Um, uh, Awaken from the Dark Slumber, which is spring... <laughs> For some reason, I don't get it. I don't really get the reasons behind each of the song titles per se. Well, what working with our slumber essentially is, you know, I guess, spring emerging from winter. Yeah. I mean, that side of things I do kind of get, but at the same time, you'd never associate these songs with those seasons. It isn't very um, used to the terms. Yeah. Um, but as an opening track, it's a great opening because it builds and layers and you get a sort of orchestral arrangement feel from it. Mm. It's interesting about keyboards in it as well. Because I remember has been using keyboards quite a bit, but there seems to be a lot more of it specifically in this song than before. Mm. Oh, just reading up on the liner notes. Ah, that explains a lot. Each of the band members is credited as a specific season. Okay. So you've got Yari, who's credited as winter, Timu, who's credited as spring, Yuka as autumn, and Kai as summer. Okay. Um, so that, that could be part of the reason why they've got the different... I don't know. Um, it does help set up the concept for the classical movements and all that sort of thing. Uh, the Forest That Weeps is a nice progression in terms of sound. Uh, it's got this great flow from low atmosphere to grand bombast, 
and then bringing it back down again. The one thing that this song may have thing of is the kind of opening kind of riff scene on there where it's building up. It sounds extremely agalock Yeah, I can hear that. Uh, you can think, this is this is Agalock. <laughs> Oh, well, not the fact that Agalock doesn't exist anymore, but... Well, for the time being... Well, Agalock is... Oh, he's confirmed dead, but both the main lewd, Tornholm, and the rest of the band have gone off in different directions. They're both in their own products. Ah. So the band is dead, but everyone involved in it pretty much is now going on to work on something else. There it is. Yeah. The opening riff is sort of a gallop riff, which I think definitely works towards... That actually, I feel, is one of the strongest songs in terms of giving the feel of the season that it's named after. Mm, nice. Because having the gallop riff gives it a sort of driving force. And if you actually experience genuine British summer, as opposed to what Britain normally has, which is weather... Um, oh, well, I've been having since I've moved here, and uh, I've been raining every other day pretty much. Well, you're on the coast, so it's either going to be boiling hot or raining for all fuck. It, the best thing about it, it's never been hot. I've not had a single day since I moved to have actually been too hot. Mm. It's beautiful. <laughs> but as I said, when I was predecessing that, oh, we moved down here, it's, everything is wetter, but it's warmer in the winter, but it's colder in the summer. Mm. So that's, that's good for me. Yeah. Um, what's interesting to note about summer is the personnel involved on the song, because it's not just... It's not just Winter Sun in this one. It's got a full choir. I oh, know, it's bloody amazing. It's the best part of the song. And you want to know who's in the choir? Oh. Um, it's basically a who's who of battle power and black metal. Yes. Which I think I remember hearing about this, actually, but it isn't actually an actual release. Um, so it, here's just some of the names that stood out to me. You've got Harry Jørgensen of Tear. Yes. Marcus Toivonen of Inciferum. All of Turisas. Jazz. I, I actually looked it up. It's all of the band. <laughs> nice. Um, Daniel Freyberg of Children of Bodom. And Mitya... Oh, God, fucking Finnish names. Mitya Havilati of Moonsorrow. And these are just the nice. people I recognise. I used to listen to all Moonsorrow. What about the I've heard? Um, you've also got... Someone from a band called Denigrate and Gloomy Grim. Don't know that. Um, Miko Salavara, if that means anything. Sounds like this. Um, someone from Scoring Helsinki. And someone from Kirko Kavit and Atmosphere Enterprise. Don't know. Also. Uh, if people in the audience do recognise these names, please... Feel free to post links and whatnot so we can experience what this music is, because that's what we're here for, talking about and learning about new music. I'll submit though, after the extremely agalocky intro, mm -hmm. this song probably feels the most like Winter Sun that I would expect. Mm -hmm. The second half feels, it feels quite similar to some of the stuff they've done before. Yeah. This is quite similar in some places to Interferum as well, which makes sense. Mm. Seeing as was also the songwriter of Interferum, I believe. I wouldn't know. But yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, Eternal Darkness, which is the autumn song. Uh, I'm going to be honest, that was probably the weakest on the album for me. I was about to say the same thing. Um, I'll explain my reasoning, but... What's your reasoning? Uh, I don't really have any particular reasoning, but I've been listening to the album a couple of times. It just. It never stuck out. It really stood out to me or anything. Nothing stuck in my head. Uh. It doesn't feel out of place or anything. I mean, it fits, but it just doesn't seem to have as much holding power or staying power as the other tracks. I mean, for me, the problem is everything is this fast, manic roar into the void, and it's a bit too. There's too much speed. Well, there's two of speed coming from a person who likes thrash metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when the person who likes thrash metal is saying there's too much speed, you know there's a problem. But saying there's too much speed is the wrong way of putting it. Um, the drums specifically. Lost beat. It, it's one of those there's no relenting with the drums, and it kind of overwhelms the song. Yeah, basically the first half of the song, and soon it's say what? 14 minutes song? Yeah. <laughs> it's just close to boss bit. Let's slow down for the second half, but you'll get there first. Yeah. 
I mean, it, what it puts me in mind of is, um, you know, the video that guy did of the drummers on different drugs. Yeah. And it's got the cocaine one and it's just... And it just put me in mind of that. Um, I'll post a link to that video in the description. Um, some of the progressions are enjoyable, but the pervasive nature of the drums kind of spoils it for me. Um, I say the second half is more what I want from the song, but the first half just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm the same. I actually put the song improves around the third movement when the drumming is slower and more deliberate and allows the song to build instead of being underlaid with this constant rapid drumming. Um, finally, you have Loneliness. Loneliness now? Best song. Yeah. You've got a rare situation where we're in complete agreement on both the weakest and the strongest songs. Although on a four-song album, that's not difficult. Junior. Um, also, I'd say that the totaling of this track is the most apt as well. As yes. Um, it's a great close to the album, and it feels very waltz-like in terms of timing and rhythm. I kind of get vibes of Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, for anyone who doesn't know it, look up Dance of the Nights and you'll get what I mean. Uh, what makes it the strongest for me is that it has this grandiose sweeping sound combined with a dull ache that permeates the soundscape. It's kind of, well, as we were discussing earlier about doom metal, it's all about, you know, kind of constant rhythm. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's a relatively, this opening is pretty repetitive, but it's done in a good way. Kind of moves like a march and it does just a plod, boring plod. Mm, which is one of the key problems I have with a lot of doom metal. Mm. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I'm not that big of a fan of Paradise Lost's early stuff. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, I'm much more a fan of them for kind of Draconian Times era compared to, say, Icon. Mm. But still, the other stuff's pretty decent. But anyway, back to this. I mean, naturally, this also makes me think of some of the latter parts of Insomnium's Winter's Gate for the same kind of reasons. And it kind of encapsulates, well, winter. Yeah. It's it's vast and empty and hopeless. <laughs> um, I'd say the acoustic version is a bit of a curiosity. Who's trying to bonus track, isn't it? Ah, uh, I don't think it is. No, it's, well, it's listed as an acoustic bonus track, but... It's not a bonus track in the sense of special edition or anything like that. Uh -huh. From what I can see, it is on the standard edition, so... That's cool. I haven't got a copy yet because kind of the no being nowhere that sells CDs anywhere near me. Yeah, and I've been... I've already got too many physical albums that I need to listen through. I... Clearly do not have enough physical albums. I've only got like 300, so... Well, what I mean is, I've got too many physical albums I haven't listened to yet that I need to listen to. Uh, but hey, um, I do intend picking this up, actually, because well, there was time kind of disappointed me a bit. I'm actually pretty happy with this album. Yeah. Even just with Loneliness, honestly, it's a really good song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the acoustic version of Loneliness is... A bit of a curiosity by virtue of the fact that it's not a hidden track or on the second disc or anything like that. It goes right after the original version, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a great track and it also works as a good close because it's a bit of a change of pace. And whilst you still have this dour feeling to it, it works as a more calming end. Um... Also, Jory's vocals here are really nice. It's like the one part of the album where his vocals really stand out to me. Yeah, I think that's what makes it the strongest on the album, is the fact that everything stands out. You know, it's, it's not like in some instances where things kind of blend a bit together. That's another problem I have with Time as well, actually. I thought that the, the mixing on Time was not particularly good. Mm. Everything felt kind of muddled. I mean... This album does kind of feel a little bit like that as well, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to the um, self-titled album, which felt very crisp, and you could tell by all the parts really easily apart. This does kind of feel a little, feel a little bit muddy. The mixing seems a lot better than it was in time, because time just felt claustrophobic the way it was mixed. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious as to... I mean, this was mixed by Jari. Um, yeah. Let's see. He's just something about along the lines of it you know, being is the way he wanted it to sound. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say here who did the mixing on time one. Um, but anyway. I suppose it probably was, sorry. I think he did it for 
at least the first album on this one. Um, final thoughts on the album. Definitely pick it up if you're a fan of... What sorts of metal would you even describe it as? Probably Melo Death. Yeah. Oh, well, other influences in there as well, but Melo is the core. Answer. Yeah. I mean, it's described here as melodic death metal, power metal, and symphonic black metal, which, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting mix. Yeah. If you're a fan of those sorts of genres, definitely pick it up. If you're a fan of Enciferum, definitely pick it up. And obviously, if you're a fan of Winter Sun, you're not going to be disappointed by this. Um, well, unless you're all putting it through time two. <laughs> um, score out of five? Um, why not say probably 3.5, but I think it may go up to four after a few listens. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same sort of brackets of 3.5, possibly four. Um, I will admit a lot of what brings the score down is autumn. Mm, I probably agree. The thing is that I said probably still isn't as strong as the Tessa Tussle album. Because that album is fantastic. I still need to uh, listen to that one. It, it's still a brutal album. I will most likely go back to it and enjoy it a lot. I will probably pick it up when I get a chance. Mm. Hopefully I have a day off sometime in the next three billion years and I'll be able to go over to Plymouth. <laughs> um, that's it for this episode. Don't know what will be reviewed next. It might be with a guest host, not sure. Um, Quite possible at this rate. Yeah. I'd probably aim for that, because, yeah, I'm having unrelenting work for a while, yeah. Yeah. I've got, I've got a couple of people I can talk to about being guest hosts, so it's not a problem. Um, and it's all... Possibly be with a guest host if it's not, well, not sure what the next episode is going to be. I think we're going to have to give up on doing the Vast EP unless I can find a download for it. Because it hasn't come through the fucking mail! <laughs> Even now, that's like months away. A month, a month. It, it's been like three winks. Winks? Weeks since I've ordered it. Me meanwhile, the Braskaya album... I pre-order and it comes through on the day of release. Yeah, that happens. I've had things. I've actually pre-ordered stuff from you know other countries and they've arrived pretty much on release day. It's sort of like I I pre-order something from Russia or no from Vienna and it arrives on day of release. Order something from America and it's three weeks since it was released and it still hasn't fucking arrived. Yeah, I mean, that's myself. From Japan, that's managed to get over here pretty much for release day or day after. And some of the stuff from Blood Music arrived pretty much straight away from Finland. So. But anyway, we'll sort something out, whether it's between us or whether I sort something out between me and a guest co host, whatever. I'm sure I'll find something. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.